Hi Fisher Kids, here we are with our Fisher Kids Online Mission Club for the third time. If you missed the first two episodes, they're on the church website. Now if you have anyone listening with you who was not with us in Fisher Kids for the first half of this story, you can tell them all you remember from our time together in the Adventure Room at Grace Baptist Church. Let your friends know how to find these lessons online. In our last lesson, we were with John Payton in the hut of the chief of the Inland Tribe. The chief had been ill and his village warriors had come to John and told John, he's dying, we need you to come. John soon realized that the minute he went into the chief's hut, the other warriors left and there he was alone with the chief. John wondered if this was some kind of a plot to kill him. He prayed for the Lord Jesus to protect him. When he went over closer, he saw that the chief had pulled out his big knife. It was a plot to kill him. The chief of the inland people pointed the knife right at John's heart. John prayed for help as he backed away from him. The chief came toward him and raised his arm to stab him. And then suddenly the chief stopped. He just looked at John as if he was frozen or if someone had grabbed his hand that held the knife. Go, said the chief, go quickly because the people are angry. John ran as fast as he could back to his hut. Perhaps the chief thought if he killed John, it would help him control his tribe because they were ready for war. Not many days later, John heard that the chief was dead. He thought of all the times he had told the chief about the love of God and the forgiveness that Christ offered. What stopped the chief? Of course it was God who stopped him, but was the chief finally ready to listen to God? John could only hope that the chief had turned to Jesus before he died. He had certainly heard and learned how to be saved. After the death of the chief, John's enemies were worse than ever. They surrounded his house. They broke into his storehouse. They took all of his belongings. John was looking out the window of his hut when an ax came flying right through the window and he almost hit him in the head. He knew they were coming to kill him. But just then he heard the war drums beating in the distant jungle. He knew that that sound was calling the warriors back to their tribe that probably another tribe was coming and they were preparing for war. Once again, John prayed for, God, for God's protection as he slipped out the door of his hut and ran towards a smaller village where the people were friendly to him. Just then, a few of the warriors turned around and saw him. John prayed for God's protection and turned around and yelled, God will punish you if you kill me. That made the warriors afraid. They had seen God's power and knew he was more powerful than their gods, but they were not willing to turn from their evil ways. They ran back to their chief to prepare for war. John went on to the village. Now in this village, the chief of the village was a friendly chief named Noor. He was a Christian and had listened very carefully every time John had taught the Bible. Chief Noor was truly, had truly grown in his faith since he had become a Christian. All the people of the village were terrified. They could hear the war drums. They knew that they were greatly outnumbered. We will all be killed and eaten by our enemies today. Many of the mothers screamed and grabbed their children and ran to try to hide in the bushes. Chief Norwar was lame, so he wouldn't do very well running away from anything but he was also very, very calm. He just took a canoe and turned it over and sat down on it. Missy, friend, he said to John, we must pray for our God. He is the one true God and he is more powerful than any evil. If it is his will, he can help us. And if he does not, we will all die today. John got on his knees right beside the chief. He prayed for God to have mercy on them and to protect them from the angry warriors who were on their way to kill them. They could hear the drums of war beating loudly. They could hear the warriors yelling and screaming. 
Then, then suddenly they only heard the war drums. The screaming and yelling from the warriors had stopped. Friend Missy, God is hearing us, said the chief. Keep praying. John stayed on his knees and prayed. The terrified villagers watched in amazement as one by one the rampaging warriors stopped and stood still as if frozen. Lord Jesus, we ask you to answer our prayer and stop these warriors. We ask you to protect us from their evil. John was praying in a voice loud enough for those warriors to hear him. Oh, they stopped all right. They watched and listened. Then, as if moved by an unseen hand, they turned around and went back into the jungle where they had come from. God has answered our prayers. He saved our lives. Let us praise him now, said the chief. The village of people, they all came together. The mamas and their children came out from where they'd been hiding in the bushes. And they began to sing praise songs. When John had taught them Bible lessons, he ought to also taught them songs of praise. The sound of their voices grew louder and louder and finally drowned out the drums of war. What an amazing praise service the entire village had together. The villagers loved John and were so thankful he had come to them to teach them of God's love and the forgiveness of sin. Many of them were now true Christians, and they knew that if a war came and they were killed, they would go to heaven to live with Jesus forever. That helped them to be able to stay happy and peaceful during great times of stress. Finally, the day came when the chief felt that John should go away. You have much more service to do for the Lord, Missy, said the chief. The enemies will store up war, stir up war again because they have not yet turned from their evil ways. More war is coming and you must go. The chief knew what he was talking about because the enemy warriors soon began to sneak around through the jungle seeking ways to attack. Each day they came. The chief knew war was coming soon because that was their tactic. They would come in. They would watch, they would see where they might attack, and then they would slip back into the forest. They would come and they would watch. The chief knew this is all the signs of war. Then he called John and he said, my son will take you to a place where you can stay safe until you can get away. John felt he should do what the chief had told him. He followed the chief's son deep into the jungle. The boy stopped in a place where the trees were so thick you could not hardly push your way through them. The young man pointed up to the sky, to the canopy of the tall trees. Up there, Missy, climb until you can no longer be seen. Wait and do not come down, no matter what you hear. John began to climb the tree. As he was climbing, he remembered how many fun times he had had in his home in Scotland when he was a child. His, he and his brothers and sisters would play for hours and climb the trees near their home. Who would have ever thought that a skill he learned as a child would be used when he was grown and in the faraway islands of Vanuatu? But God knew. God had been guiding and directing John all along, and the tree climbing skill was being put to good use now. John was so high, he could see the waves of the ocean in the distance. But he had climbed through such thick branches that no one could see him from the ground below. The chief's son had guided him to one of the tallest trees on the island. John could feel the tree sway a little as the gentle winds blew in from the ocean. Hours John stayed in that tree, and as darkness fell, he knew he was in for a very long stay. He heard the drums of war and the shouts and screams of the warriors, and sadly this time he also heard gunshots. Don't come down, Missy, no matter what you hear. 
John thought of what the chief's son had told him. He heard the sounds of war, the beating drums and the yelling. He heard the sounds of guns, and then it got quiet. Should he come down? No, no, he'd been told not to, and he decided God wanted him to follow the words of the chief and his son. John waited and waited, and he, and as he stayed up in the tree, he thought about his childhood home and his mother and father. He thought of so many things his parents had taught him and how they had led him to trust in Jesus and serve him. He knew that even though he could not see anything but darkness and a little bit of moonlight in the distance shining on the ocean, he knew that God was watching over him. It reminded him of when he first left home and had to walk 40 miles to catch the train to go to school. He, re he was reminded of how his father had walked with him for six miles before they parted ways. He thought of how much his father loved him. He thought of how he went on alone and he was in tears because he knew he needed to go in order to follow what the Lord was telling him to do but he also hated leaving his father. When he, then he, after a while, he decided that he would climb up on a little hill to turn around and see if he could just see his father one more time. He thought he would see his father walking way down the trail and, and just see his father from the back. But when he climbed up on the hill, he saw that his father had climbed up on a wall and was stretching up high, shielding his eyes with his hands, straining to see if he could see John. Oh, how his earthly father loved him. And you know, hanging in that tree, John felt closer to God than ever before. He was brought to tears as he thought of how his father loved him. And the thought of how God loved him and protected him so many times gave him courage. How wonderful to have a father like he had had. But now how much more wonderful to have God as his heavenly father. On through hours of darkness, John held tightly to the branches of the tree. He prayed and prayed and felt he was close to God. And so in that part, he was not afraid. The trial of waiting began and he began to grow sleepy, sleepier and sleepier and he prayed for God to keep him awake so he would not fall. His eyes were so heavy, he was so tired and needed sleep, he found himself nodding off and then suddenly jerking awake as he felt his body shift on the tree. Please God, in the name of Jesus, help me not to fall. Hold me tightly in this tree, Lord Jesus. I want to keep serving you. More hours went by and John thought he could no longer stay awake, but he knew if he really fell asleep, he would fall to his death. Then suddenly, oh, boys and girls, look at the time. You know we only have a certain amount of time for these broadcasts, so you need to tune in next week for the next lesson of our Fisher Kids Online.